So in the ancient Middle East, what happened to a people was reflected on the god that they followed. So if something good happened to that people group, it was believed that the god must be more legitimate. And if something bad happened, the god must not be much of a god at all. So in the first chapter of Daniel, when we hear that the temple items were removed and brought to the temple of the Babylonian gods, the conclusion we are meant to draw is that the god of these Israelites must not be much of a god. But the scripture also says something else. In verse 2, it says that God gave his people over to Nebuchadnezzar. So, in a culture where God's reputation was dependent upon the success and flourishing of its people, the God of Israel actually allowed this to happen. I think we often take thinking like this for granted. God only seems to exist because we get that thing we prayed for. God doesn't exist in the silence. God must be alive and working because I got that parking spot or that promotion or that raise, but not in the darkness or the pain or the pandemic. So this is the challenge of Holy Week, that our God is also humble. God is willing to be humbled if it means that the mission benefits. If God's plans can be furthered by requiring that God doesn't get immediate credit, God will do that. See, in Daniel, God was willing to let his people go into captivity because in the end, it meant something a whole lot better was coming. God was willing to defile himself, or as Dale Davis writes, he was willing to suffer shame if it meant awakening his people to their danger. Now, I think there are some obvious parallels in our current pandemic situation. Think of the many sacrifices being made by our medical community as they endure these harsh realities and conditions and the truly challenging obstacles to keeping themselves and their families healthy while they work on our behalf. See, they see what this virus is doing and so it is only fit that we take their advice and stay home as much as we can, wear masks when we go out, Make sure we clean our hands regularly. Avoid physical proximity with one another as much as we can. We too must be willing to give up our short-term comfort for the long-term health of our people. And so this is how we get to participate this year in the story of Easter, that ultimate moment of God's humble sovereignty. Jesus has been smuggled into brokenness through the womb of an unwed teenager, into skin and sandals and a zip code, and was then crucified on a cross by the religious leaders via the might of the Roman Empire. And so God, humiliated, broken, bruised, and slain, was smuggled into death. And death, unsuspecting, was conquered as it gave birth to new life in Christ's resurrection. Because it was only when God humbled himself that God could then do the miraculous work of redeeming his creation. God gave up heaven to come and experience life with us, die for us, with us, and among us, so that eternity would then also be ours and available to us. And so as Paul writes, God has then exalted him to the highest of places that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every person confess that Jesus is Lord. Church, this is what Easter is all about. Grace and peace be with you all.